We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. We are not alone. to worship together like this. You from your homes, with us from ours, united as one in these gifted moments today. And whatever day you're joining us on is a gift given by God for us to experience and enjoy and to make the most of. Yeah. It's been said that every day is the world made new. Yeah. And I know what people mean when they say that, because with a new day comes the possibility of a new start, um, a new beginning and new opportunities. As we come before God in worship, as heaven and earth connect, even in moments like this. And speaking of, of Earth, of, of planet Earth, um, in 1998, an astronaut called John Glenn spoke on radio from the Discovery Space Shuttle. And he said this, I don't think you can be up here and look out the window as I did on the first day of our mission and see the Earth, our planet, from this spectacular vantage point to look out at this kind of creation and not believe in God. He said, to me, it's impossible. It just strengthens my faith. Mm. And what an incredible sight and experience yeah. that must be to see planet Earth um, from up there. So friends, may this time together, not, not from our spaceship, but from <laughs> the sanctuary, the module of our homes, may this be a means of strengthening our faith, lifting our spirits, energising us, and causing us to be um, in awe of God, our Creator, the one who placed the stars and the planets and the galaxies and the solar systems in, in place, uh, the one who also, who did all of that, holds us yeah. in his hands it's incredible and these kind of thoughts will flow through this service today mm -hmm. as we worship our our mega god who who loves micro me hey listen we've got to exercise <laughs> do that with me mega god who loves micro me and you Friends, here are some photos, some pictures to awaken your mind and to stir your imagination, mm. hopefully causing you to smile and to think and to pray. The first one, imagine being on that bike. That would be hard work, wouldn't it? But do you ever feel like that? Burdened, weighed down, just too much to carry. Well, Jesus says, are you tired, worn out, burnout on religion? Well, come to me 
and I will give you real rest. We pray. Please help me, Lord. Amen. Amen. The next picture, friends. Look at that. A tiny frog sitting on the palm of a hand. I remember a bracelet um, some years back now with the letters F-R-O-G, frog. And they stood for the words, fully reliant on God. Is that you? Is that me? I hope so. For we are in God's hands and they're the safest hands in the universe. And we pray, thank you, Lord, for holding me and please help me and use me to make a difference for you. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. And our third picture is of a dormouse. Now I'm sure you're smiling. Mm. The power of a smile. Yes, even from a joyful dormouse. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. The joy giver, the joy designer, the joy bringer wants you, wants me to know his joy. And so we pray today, Lord, help me to choose joy. Amen. Amen. And here's our final picture. Hands making a heart. Why not try that at home if you're with others or, or make a heart yourself using your two hands? An old hymn says, now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. Amen. 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 Did you have a go at making a heart? Yep. You're well, struggling, aren't I'm you? I'm struggling because I've got a, a poorly <laughs> hand. We know. Oh, yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> well, you can try that later too. Friends, we have so much to be thankful for. So let's lift our voices, our hearts, our, mm. our hands as we worship and we lift high the precious and wonderful name of Jesus.
a song of praise. Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name for ever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will contend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendour of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Great are you, Lord. People of God, be encouraged. In spite of what you're going through, this is an opportunity for us to send a little hope your way. No matter what it is, the struggle, no matter what's happening, you be encouraged. Let's do it. Here we go. Woo! Say yeah, 
Yeah. yeah, what a great song that is. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Uh, and that was Ronnie Murchison singing with the group Transmission from the USA Southern Territory. And did you catch what he said at the beginning of that song? He was speaking to each one of us. People of God, be encouraged in spite of what you're going through. Yeah. Receive hope and joy. Friends, that's our heartfelt prayer today for every single one of you. Absolutely. God is so good mm. and may you know his love in these moments. There is so much about life that we don't understand, isn't there? Faith, God and all that's going on around us and within. It can be confusing. And as we find answers, we discover more questions, yeah. but that's okay. There's a mystery about faith and that's good. You know, if we knew and understood everything about everything, then we would be God. So I'm glad there's mystery and, and a wondering and that questions come all the time because that helps us to seek and to find and to trust and to hope and to believe that there's far more to life than what we see around us. Mm. Questioning unlocks answers, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? And it's all yeah. about trusting. But can we remind you what believing is and what it's not? Believing is not just saying, I believe. Believing is actually putting your yeah. life into the hands of the one you say you yes, believe in. Yeah. And his hands are the safest in the world. Yeah. So it's a good place to let yeah. go and to land on, um, isn't yes. it? Yeah. In a moment, we're gonna be hearing from some believers from Norwich Citadel. One is Kelsey, one of our young people. She's gonna share um, some thoughts with us all. Mm. And then Martin Wheeler, who is a Salvation Army officer who works at our divisional headquarters, but he's also a member of the Salvation Army at Norwich Citadel, our fellowship. He's gonna share a favorite scripture and why he's thought of that one to share with us. And then we're gonna to listen to Ali Thornton Stark, one of our friends, what a posh name um, <laughs> she's got. She's gonna share some more thoughts with us all. Ali works for the Salvation Army and will tell us a bit about that too. These thoughts will all be wrapped up with songs and videos of worship and praise to help us all on our life and our faith journey. But friends, before all of that, um, did you know? Did you know? I don't know. Uh, Listen, I haven't told you yet, haven't I? So how do you know? Listen, here goes. Did you know that scientists have discovered a planet? It's called 55 Cancri E. Listen, check this out on Google later. And it's thought to be covered in diamonds and graphite. Wow. wow. Now, planet Earth is covered with granite and water, but this planet is covered with diamonds and graphite. Incredible, isn't it? That's a lot of rings. It is. Yeah. Yeah, but listen, if you're thinking of going there, it's 40 light years away from Earth. That's 40 multiplied by 5.88 trillion miles. Wow. And it moves at a super, super fast speed around its own sun. Its year or one full orbit around its sun lasts for 18 hours. While of course Earth, lasts for 365 days, one year. So so one year on this planet is just 18 hours. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It is. Yeah. But before you all rush off to find the treasure on 55 Cancri E, mm. not only is this planet so far, far away, you could never travel there, but it's also really warm. Mm. 4,400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's really hot. <laughs> that's really hot, hot yeah. <laughs> but here's the amazing thing. Listen, are you listening? Yes, they shout. You, you'll be spaced out by this. Listen carefully. There's an even greater treasure mm. than all of those diamonds, and it's much closer to home. It's the treasure of God's Holy Spirit. When you became a follower of Jesus, this treasure came to live inside of you. He's your helper, your comforter, and your guide. And Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 6 that he's the Spirit of God living in us. And that's an amazing treasure worth more than a whole planet of diamonds. Mm. It's absolutely amazing, isn't it? That the God who did all of that yeah. planet and solar system and star making loves me and you. Mega God loves micro me and you. Friends, think about all of these incredible things as we worship together.
have you ever struggled like you have got a really hard piece of homework that you have to that you can't do or maybe you have to walk to school like i have to walk 45 minutes just to get to school or maybe you're finding your work hard do not worry for the lord is on your side like it says in isaiah 41 verse 10 so do not fear for i am with you do not be dis dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you and help you i will hold you up within my righteous right hand dear god thank you for always being there for me and reminding me that you are my strength and my song and that i have no nothing to fear amen Our god is a great big god my favourite scripture. Whenever I'm asked this I always return to John chapter 21 and today will be no different. It recounts a pivotal moment in the life of Peter. The story follows on from the extraordinary days of Jesus death and resurrection where I'm sure there would have been much speculation anxiety, concern, and even fear about what the future looked like. And here we have Peter, amidst all this confusion, returning to what he knew best. He'd gone fishing. The story tells us that after a long night of trying to catch fish, a voice from the shore calls out, try throwing your nets over the other side of the boat. As a result, the nets were filled with fish. And also in that moment, Peter recognized the one who spoke. It was Jesus. The Christian writer, Adrian Plass, captures the next few moments with these words. And this son of God, this savior of mankind, this one who made everything what was he doing when Peter arrived, breathless and dripping wet, on the shore? What solemn and majestic task 
was Peter's risen Lord engaged in? He was cooking breakfast for his friends. I love that image of Jesus, the saviour of mankind, the one who made everything, cooking breakfast for his friends. Last week we celebrated Pentecost, where the message of Jesus' redemptive power transcended the barrier of countless languages. For me, I see here in John chapter 21, another universal language being spoken, or should I say demonstrated. Jesus shows us that it can be in the simplest of tasks, or even the most mundane of chores, that we can be the language of love to each other. Returning to Adrian Plass, he sums up this encounter with Jesus with the following words. It seems to me that Jesus still waits quietly on the shore of the real world, still willing to feed those who love him, to settle and forgive the sins with which they have hurt him and to send them out with quiet minds and stronger hearts to bring others to him.
Hi Mark and Andrea, thank you for inviting me to join you today and hello to everybody who is watching and joining in worship today, wherever you may be. My name is Ali, Ali Thornton Stark, and I am the Outreach Mission Partner for Older People's Ministries for the Salvation Army's territory in the UK and Ireland. And today it's my joy to be with you and um, just to tell you a little bit about what I do. I support local leaders and churches um, for the Salvation Army in supporting any work that they do with their retired people. Um, as we get older, as we um, journey into later life, there's much that we can still do. And so my role is to, is to come along and help people in supporting that. So it can be anything that I do from um, helping people to realise their gifts and potential as retired people um, through to a singing project for people living with dementia or a project with older people and toddlers for intergenerational ministry and much more in between. But it's absolutely beautiful and I love every minute of it. I'm so blessed. So today I just want to talk to you a little bit about my holiday. So a few weeks ago I went to Ilkley and I come from Yorkshire, I actually come from Otley in Yorkshire. So um, myself and my partner, we went down to the river in Ilkley and we were skimming stones and then I saw this amazing view and I took a picture which I just want to share with you now. So hopefully you could see a photograph that I took of a very simple wooden cross with a black um, bin liner attached to it. And as soon as I saw it, it was as if God was shouting, Ali, don't take your rubbish home. And by that, what I mean is, don't keep your rubbish in your heart. Don't take it with you. And what I mean by rubbish is, you know, our metaphorical backpack that we put on and in it, we, we pop in our grief and our bitterness and our sadness, our disappointment. Oh, we just load ourselves with it. And Jesus says, but I want you to leave it at the foot of the cross. Don't take your rubbish home with you. And in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 28 to 30, we hear Jesus's own words when he says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I thought, what a beautiful commitment from our Lord and Saviour, telling us to lay down our burdens, whatever they may be, to place our rubbish, our burdens at the foot of the cross and to live freely and lightly in the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ who died for you and me. And then he says, but there's one more thing. Once you've laid your burdens down, don't go picking them back up because when we do that, we can't live freely and lightly. So lay down what it is that you need to lay down today. If it's grief and sadness and it is weighing heavy on your heart, leave it with Jesus. Let him carry that burden for you. If it's the burden of worrying what other people think about you, let it go. Let it go and live freely and lightly. If you're carrying bitterness because of what you feel should have been in your life and it isn't, lay it down to carry bitterness home in our heart. It does nobody any good, most of all ourselves. And if you're carrying anger, lay it down. Lay that rubbish, that burden down so that Jesus can take it from you and I because he can. So today, with a deep trust in our Lord and Saviour and a knowledge in the one who can do this for us, Remember, don't take your rubbish home with you. Leave it at the foot of the cross and do not go back and pick it back up, okay? I'll try to do the same myself. 
Instead, let us accept hope that comes from Jesus Christ. Peace, joy, restoration, healing, forgiveness, his compassion and love. All of this comes freely because Jesus paid the ultimate price on that cross so that he could take our rubbish and take our burdens. So God bless you, my friends, this day and the days that lie ahead. And I pray that you and I will live freely and lightly in the saving power of Jesus Christ. Oh, and I hope we get to meet one day in person. That would be lovely. God bless you and take care, living freely and lightly in the precious name of Jesus. Bye-bye. God bless. bless you all friends we hope that these have been special and significant moments for you all and a big thanks to Kelsey and to Martin and our young people for helping us to experience this and a special thanks to Ali mm. for that inspired and blessed thought thank you and I really like the picture she used there too yeah there are attachments again, friends, with this video for you to enjoy, devotions and studies for you to share in, including one all about joy. Have a think about that. And there's another one all about planets. Uh, I'm sorry we haven't attached any real diamonds oh, um, to this too, but do enjoy those. And can we say to our friends at Norwich Citadel that there's no Zoom worship today? So enjoy your bank holiday walk or your jog or your bike ride or, or your swim or, or your skydive to try and find that planet with the diamonds on. 
We started our time together with some pictures. So here's one more. Have a look at this. I'm sure you're all smiling now, yeah? Do you know anyone who looks like that? Answers on a postcard, please. Vision. That's the word I want to use for this picture. Vision. The Bible says without vision, the people perish. We need God's guidance and insight, God's leading and God's presence, mm. don't we? May we all continue to seek his will and his way as we follow him and see the world through his eyes. The one who gives us vision. Mm. So before we sing and see pictures to the hymn, Be Thou My Vision, let us have the privilege of praying with you just now in these sacred moments. Let's pray together. Jesus, light of the world, open my eyes that I may see your presence that is all around me. Open my ears that I may hear the voice that is quiet yet ever near. Open my heart that I may feel the love of God close and real. Open each sense, make me aware of the power and peace always there. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 Friends, continue to be blown away and amazed that the God who placed the stars and the planets in space loves you. Yes, remember, mega God loves micro me and you every single one of you god bless you friends bye bye